Good morning, y'all. It is another beautiful day out here on the Alabama coast. Got a beautiful sunrise happening right here. We are out here on the Sea Do Explorer Pro 230 right here, and we are getting ready to make a 16 mile push out to an oil rig where I caught a big mangrove snapper the other day. But we have a kicker to today's video. We do not have any live or dead bait on the board, so, or on the board, on the boat. And, uh, we're, we got stuff to catch bait. So we might be dropping some sabikis around, stuff like that, but that's the goal. Come out here with nothing but artificials, work through everything, and try to get something to take home to cook for y'all today. So let's get out here, see if we can make something happen. All right, kill switch on, let's go. y'all we just pulled up to our first stop right here and uh, we're gonna be dropping down a sabiki rig seeing if we can get us some live bait a lot of these sabiki rigs are real real light line always run real loose drag on them and there we go got us a hard tail some of the best bait around for bigger fish and we're just gonna take a 5 volt circle hook put it right there through its tail make sure we get that all the way through that should be good. He'll be able to swim kind of natural down there. See if we can get bit. All right, going down. Oh, he's got bit. He's getting bit. Backing out of the structure just a little bit. Got him. Get your butt up. Mm, come on. Mm. Typically, you don't get small fish eating these hardtails. Can't tell, it looks like a mangrove. Nah, it's a red snapper. Come on up. <laughs> All right, that's the first one for the box, y'all. So red snapper is open today. We get to keep two of them. They gotta be 16 inches. I know he's gonna make it. Yeah, that, he is 19 and three quarters and going in the box. All right, so came out here, no live bait, no dead bait, caught some bait, dropped it down, first drop. We got a keeper snapper in the box. I'd like to put two of those in the box and then try to get us some mangrove, some lane snapper. We're gonna troll around, do some other stuff. But so far we got something in the box and I got something to cook for y'all a little bit later on. All right, we're gonna take us another one of these hard tails right here. Same thing right through the back right there. Just like that. Oh, my leader. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna shorten my leader up because it's a little chewed up right there. He might've got me off in some structure. All right, going down. No. Mm. He got him. Got my bait on that one. He slammed it. Well, let's try this one right here. He is dead, so. Yeah, we'll dangle him just like that and see what happens. All right, sending the new bait down. Mm, got him, that's a big one. Mm, bad word. So for those of y'all that don't know, this right here is a sabiki rig and it is the easiest way to catch your bait in salt water. They sell these in just about any salt water tackle shop. And all I do is put a one ounce pyramid weight on it find some structure offshore, something like this. Don't have to have structure. A lot of times you just throw it off the beach around piers and stuff that you can catch your bait, but I toss it out and just jig it up and down, work it around until we start getting bit. Oh, and there's our bait right there. It's feeling like the right kind. Yeah. <laughs> Nice, juicy hardtail right there. And that is the easiest way to catch bait out here. Just toss a sabiki around. Sometimes you catch a stringer full. Sometimes you just catch one or two. You keep chunking that guy out there, you will catch lots of good bait. All right, hardtail going down. Let's see if we can catch this fish this time. He's got it, he's got it. Got him. Mm, we're in the structure. God, it's a big one. Get out of there, get out. Gotta get out of that structure. Beep, son of a bad word. All right, 
sending another hardtail down. Come on. Got him. Get your foot up. Get up. Come on. You're coming with me. You're coming out of there. You're getting out of the structure. I don't think that's the big one. Is that a mangrove? That looks like a big mangrove. Tell me that's a big mangrove. No, it's a red snapper. <laughs> oh, it was looking like a big old mangrove down there. Come here. <laughs> well, that's our second snapper to fill our box. I have lost some really, really big fish down there today. Whew, on these hardtails. You want to catch a big fish, you got to drop a big bait. You're not going to get hit as often, but when you do get bit, more likely it's something that can go in the cooler. That is going to make an excellent, excellent meal right there. Another one probably around 20, 21. And another one for the box. All right, so we got our two snapper around this rig right here. We're going to go ahead and make a little bit of a run in, target some other rigs, maybe troll around. I'm not real sure yet. But yeah, let's go a little bit closer and see what we find. All right, we've eased in closer to shore. The king mackerel have been running around 30, 40 foot of water here lately from what I'm hearing. So we're gonna be trolling around all these near shore rigs. We're just using the Nomad DTH 125 15 foot diver here. We're gonna chunk it behind the ski. Hopefully we can pull in a fish on it. Just give it a good little toss right there. It's feet out, I don't know, 60, 70 yards of line. Maybe not quite that much. All right, right there. Turn our clicker on. Get it set just right. There we go. And we'll shove it right there. Now, this jet ski does have troll modes and we're gonna use it to try to maintain our GPS speed around four or five mile per hour. All right, y'all, we just hooked up. We just hooked up. Keep it in gear for just a minute. Turn that clicker off. It's got a little bit of weight to it. Come on. Swimming at me. Gotta keep it in gear. No clue what we got. Guess it could be a Spanish, Spanish or King. I think that's a giant Spanish. I think we just hooked a giant Spanish. Yeah! Woohoo! Come here. Look at that one. Is that a King or a Spanish? It might be a King. Alright, chill out. Chill out. That's a legal king too. Yeah, but I believe it's a Spanish. We'll find out in just a second. Ugh. Oh, I just pulled my kill switch. Alright, get in here. Get in here. Alright. <laughs> Woo, that's a Spanish. <laughs> Y'all, that right there is my PB, PB Spanish. Wow. I'm gonna show y'all in just a second how I know it's a Spanish. Just gotta be real careful because they got some razor sharp teeth. All right, I'm gonna have to go ahead. Oh, the hook fell out. All right, the lure's not in you anymore. Go ahead and dispatch them real quick. All right, well there it is right there. Giant Spanish mackerel. And as I was fighting them, I could see right here, if I could get it to come up. It's got that dorsal fin right there. 
that's black and I could see it in the water, which told me that it was a Spanish, which you see the yellow dots it has on it right there. But you also got your lateral line right there. It's just a gradual drop on it, whereas a king mackerel is going to have a real steep drop. So giant, giant Spanish mackerel landed here today. So we've got us a couple of nice red snapper in the box. Just picked up a decent mackerel, my PB mackerel. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and make our run back in shore. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead, load up, head to the house, and I'm gonna whip up lunch for y'all. All right, kill switch on, let's roll. Also, we are back at the house now. Check it out. I think I made a little bit of a mistake. Not a big mistake, but I think I made a little bit of a mistake on the water. So I said that this was a Spanish mackerel, and I did not look hard enough at that drop right there. So that is actually a king mackerel on a Spanish. It's just going to kind of subtly run down. So yeah, that is a juvenile king mackerel but it is still a legal fish because he is 27 and a half to the fork and they only got to be 26 so the cool thing is i get to show y'all how i clean king mackerel uh and prep it to uh go in the fryer y'all watch this let's move this old board out of the way so this is probably one of the easiest fish there is to clean uh, whenever you want to do king balls, macro balls. This will work on big Spanish, anything like that. But all we're going to do is come down here and basically just cut strips all the way down that mackerel. About an inch, inch and a half. Just like that right there. And then now all you have to do to get that meat is just come in right here and push that meat up just like that and you're going to get your king ball so you just go all the way down the meat pushing it up just like that really really simple and pretty much i don't have to show y'all the whole thing but yeah Take that meat right there. And we're gonna put it in a Ziploc bag and we're gonna be making king mackerel fried balls. All right, so we're ready to cook up our mackerel balls right now. Here they are, just got a few of them that I took off for lunch today. And we got some panko crumbs, a little egg wash, some flour seasoning. We're gonna be building, like I said, fried mackerel balls, but we're also gonna be making a sauce with that. You do not have to have king mackerel or Spanish mackerel for this. You can do this with any fish, just cut them up into nuggets and uh, follow the same process. But yeah, let's go ahead and get after it cook our lunch all right so we got some cast iron skillet set up here outside and we're just gonna be using some peanut oil dropping it in and i don't know getting about an inch or so maybe not that much yeah about an inch half an inch of oil up on that pan and then we're gonna go ahead and turn our burners up to high and we're gonna look to get that oil to around 375 350 375 there she goes and then while our oil is heating up, we're gonna go ahead and prep our fish. So we just got our king mackerel right there. And we're gonna be taking a little bit of Tony seasoning. And we wanna make sure that we get everything nice and coated down here. And just give it a good toss in that seasoning. And then from there, we're gonna season up our flour as well only seasoning we're going to use for this is some cajun seasoning you can use whatever you want we got some tonys laying around the house so that's what we're going to be using mix that up into the flour and then in goes our fish and we're just going to stir this up until everything gets coated you can toss it around only going to be going into this flour batch one time all right and then from there we're going to roll our fish in our egg and then drop it into our panko. I'll come back to y'all once we got everything over into the panko. All right, we got everything in the panko crumbs now. 
These are seasoned panko crumbs. So we're just gonna put the lid on there and give it a nice dusting. Just like that. Now, that can just kind of hang out until our oil gets up to temp. All right, our oil has reached 360. I think that's a good spot to start dropping stuff in here. Oh yeah. And we're just gonna let these go until they turn golden brown. Let's go ahead and give our fish a flip as you can see right there. That's the color we're looking for, perfectly golden. Go ahead and kill my heat. I think I got enough heat to last the rest of this fry. All right, our fish is looking about done right here. We're gonna go ahead, pull it off and let it sit on a napkin, just kind of soak up some of that grease while we work on our sauce. All right, last thing we gotta do is build us a sauce. I think my pan is a little hot. That's all right. I do have a little bit of olive oil in there and we got a little bit of diced up mushroom and about a half of a medium sized onion. Both of these diced pretty finely and we're just going to saute and sweat these all the way down. There we go. Starting to look real good. Starting to bring out some of them colors really starting to release too i can smell a lot of that onion and mushroom starting to break down this is going to be awesome now that our onions and mushroom are looking nice and cooked down we're going to go in with about a tablespoon of garlic right there and we got to be quick with this next step we don't want to burn our garlic so get it nice and mixed around and we're going to go in with some heavy whipping cream there we go right about there now, i don't measure y'all i kind of eyeball stuff but we're gonna go ahead and reduce our heat way off here and we're gonna let that simmer one last thing we got to do you know we got to add some seasoning to it so we're going in with some tonys give it a little cajun kick and that's it we're just going to let that kind of reduce down just a little bit thicken up and it's ready to serve all right so check it out we got a bed of rice down we got a couple of our macro balls we got our sauce right here try to spoon it up throw a little bit of this on top just like that all right well there it is y'all that is the finished product smells amazing i'm starving and it's pretty doggone hot out here so i'm gonna go ahead take a bite for y'all Show y'all the inside of that macro ball. That is absolutely killer. A lot of Cajun kick all the way through. You can eat this without the sauce, but I feel like the sauce just really ties everything together and makes it a total complete dish absolutely killer i'm gonna go ahead and end it there eat this lunch and i do hope y'all enjoyed this video if y'all did please leave me a like comment with any questions subscribe if you haven't already and we will see y'all in the next one